Chapter 2 begins with adding and subtracting polynomials. It talks about polynomials because these are terms like any of these three here. A, a monomial is a polynomial, a binomial is a polynomial, and three terms is a trinomial. I know if you go on a Google search and ask what a polynomial is, they'll tell you it has to have more than two terms, but this isn't true. It depends, I guess, on, on who's writing the textbook, but anything that has positive exponents, in this case these halls have twos, ones, or even if you had a constant, it could have, um, could have a variable with an exponent to the power of zero, which would make it one. So those are all considered, these are all considered polynomials, all of these three here. Monomial, one term, just like a monocycle. A binomial has two terms, so that makes it like a bicycle. And a trinomial, three terms, like a tricycle, right? So easy to remember. Now these are examples that are not polynomials. So when we have a negative exponent, um, if this is in the denominator, it could actually be written as x plus 5 to the negative 1. So again, this would have a negative exponent. 1 over x is the same thing as x to the negative 1. So that's not a polynomial. And the radical equation is not a polynomial because it actually has a fractional exponent. Root of x is equal to x to the 1 half power. So just so you have a, an understanding of what a polynomial is and what it isn't. So today we're going to add and subtract polynomials. This is 2.1 in your Nelson Functions 11 textbook. So we're going to take a look at what sort of situations you can run into here. And then we're going to talk about something called equivalent expressions. So if I had 3x plus 4y minus 5z, and I wanted to add that, really need a new pencil, don't I? And if I wanted to add that to 2x squared plus 6z, if I wanted to add these two things together, you'd say, well, why are they in brackets? And I know for some people, when they see a bracket, they get all confused. They think it's something very special and that it inquire, requires some sort of multiplication. It's not multiplication if you have a plus sign in between here. You can easily get rid of these brackets because in front of each one of these brackets, let me move this one over so you know this is an example and not, there wasn't a circled one in front of that bracket. Put it over here, one. Okay, so there is a one in front of this one and there is a one in front of this. You have one bracket of this and one bracket of this. So when you go to simplify this, all you want to do is remove the brackets. So I'm doing one times everything in this bracket, which basically means I just throw away the bracket, right? Where it's going to get complicated, of course, is when we have a minus sign in front. We're going to look at one of those in a minute. So if there's just brackets, you can remove brackets if the term in front is positive. You're adding them, so I'm adding one of these. So look, I just removed the brackets. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to, what they say, gather like terms. So you're looking for everything. This is like Sesame Street all over again, right? What is the same? These two are the same. And I only have one Y on this side, but these two Zs, I'm going to combine them together because they are the same and I can add them together. So a 3x squared, now you have to make sure they have the same degree. You can't add x's and x squareds together. You should know that by now. So I have 5x squared. I still have 4y's. And I have minus 5z plus 6z. So that's like 6 take away 5. And I have 1z. And there's your answer. So that's, that's pretty basic and pretty easy to do. I'm sure you all managed to figure that out without any problem whatsoever. The second one, and again, they start with the question in brackets. 2x squared minus 7x plus 6 minus bracket x squared minus 2x minus 9. So after teaching for 23 years, I know that the biggest problem in math, most errors are made around this wonderful negative sign. 
Anytime that time there's a negative, it always causes problems. So I want you to think when you see a minus, I'm subtracting. This is like a minus one. Just like we had a plus one here, plus one times each of these, no problem. Minus one, big problem, right? Big problem. I have to change the sign. I'm multiplying. This is minus one times everything in this bracket. So don't forget your equal signs as you go from line to, to line. 2x squared minus 7x. It was kind of sloppy x up there, wasn't it? Plus 6. Now minus 1 times x. A negative times a positive is a negative. A negative times a negative is a positive. And a negative times a negative is a positive. So obviously if you had missed this minus 1 times what's in the bracket, you would have made a lot of mistakes. So now I gather like terms again. Let's underline them. So I have a 2x squared and a minus x squared. And I've got this one and this one. So if you're doing, if, if you tend to make little mistakes like that, it's a really good idea to get a colored pencil or a highlighter or something. And just make sure that you don't mix up uh, your terms. So my x squareds, 2 minus 1 is just 1. Minus 7 plus 2 is minus 5. And 6 plus 9 is 15. And there you go. Okay, so that's the first part of the lesson, 2.1. All you have to do is add and subtract things. Be careful with the brackets. And most importantly, this is what you really need to be careful with. It's like anytime you see a minus sign, you should be thinking stop. Stop and be careful. Expand carefully, minus one times each of those brackets. Okay, so now we're going to talk about how to tell if um, an expression is equivalent. Flip this over. So what does equivalent mean? Well, if I told you 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you'd say, well, it means the left side of the equation has to be equal to the right side, right? 2 plus 2 is 4. So if an expression is equivalent, so if an expression is equivalent, I shouldn't say an expression, it should say if expressions, because we're talking about two different expressions, right? If expressions are equivalent, there's three things that can happen. One, they simplify to the same expression. So you might be asked, you know, something that doesn't look at all like the other thing until you, you do the expanding or adding and subtracting. And lo and behold, they are the same. They simplify to the same expression. That's the first thing. They produce the same graph. So sometimes you'll see things graphed. Produce the same graph. And here's one that says they're not, they are not equivalent, not equivalent if they result in different values. So sometimes you can plug in a value and see what you get. So if they result in different, different values. when the same numbers are substituted. Same numbers, not same ones, although that's okay too. Same numbers are substituted for the variables. For instance, if I had, um, you know, 3x squared, and I want to know if that was the same as 2x squared plus 3. Well, I could plug in 1 and see if I got the same answer. But you have to be careful because you have to make sure that more than one value gives you the same answer in each equation. Okay, let me say that again. So I have two equations, and you just plugged in 0. So let's say I had this, 3x squared plus 1. Let's say that was y. And... Um, and the other expression was um, 2x squared plus 1. And I asked you, are these equivalent expressions? And you tested 0. 
if I put in zero, I get one for this one and one for that one. So that's not a really good example, is it? Because you know that these two equations are not the same. This one has 2x squared. This has 3x squared. This one's stretched by a factor of 3. This one by 2. So they are not equivalent expressions. So I'm going to do an example from your textbook. And it's number 8AF. In the textbook, it's page 89. Um, if you're using the online textbook, check the page numbers at the bottom of the page, not on the screen at the top, because um, they're, they're numbered differently. Okay, so I have this. F at M, so function notation, so it says I'm using M's for my variable. Doesn't mean anything crazier than that. Minus M squared. And I want to know if this is the same thing as G at M. And that's going to be equal to 4M squared times m minus 1 minus oop, move over, 3m squared plus 5m. Are these the same equations? Well, it should only take you about two seconds to figure this one out. Because if you look at this equation here, if I expanded this bracket here, well, let's write it out. I have 5m minus an m squared minus 2 times this, so it's minus 4m negative times a negative would be plus 2m squared. I'm just going to flip over here really fast because you're going to see that as soon as I multiply this, 4m squared times an m, remember you're multiplying variables, the bases are the same, you add the exponents. So this is going to be like this, right? And right away I can see that I have a cubic function here, cubit, de cubic degree of 3, degree of 3 here, and the most degree I have here is going to be a degree of 2. So they're not equivalent. Not equivalent. Okay, maybe something, uh, let's see if we can get something a little harder from your homework. Let's look at 8e. Hope I'm not doing all your homework for you, or maybe you hope I am. So it says y1 is equal to 3p times q minus 2 plus 2p times q plus 5. So that's my y1 and the y2 is going to be p times q plus 4. So probably the easiest way to figure if these ones are equivalent is to expand them because you can see right away I have PQ plus 4Ps. Now I don't know how many I'm going to have here, but let's expand here so I'd have 3PQs. 3P times Q is 3PQ. 3P times minus 2 is minus 6P plus 2PQ plus 10P. And if you simplify that, I would have PQ, 5 PQs, right? 3 plus 2, so I have 5 PQs plus 4 Ps. So it's kind of close. I had the 4 Ps, but certainly the 5 PQs don't work. So there's an example where you're, they're, they're not equivalent. We already have a problem. They don't match up with the Ps and the Qs. Okay, so let's do... Let's do one with fractions because, well, you know, everybody hates fractions and sometimes good idea to go over these to make sure that you're, you're getting your fraction work for the day. So let's look at this one. I'm not sure what example. This is 3 quarters x plus 1 half y minus 2 thirds x. Now look right away. See that minus sign there? Be really careful, right? That's where... You're most likely to make a mistake. So let's see. What is this equal to? So I have 3 quarters x plus 1 half y minus 2 thirds x minus 1 quarter y. You following? Watch this negative sign here. Right? This is the really dangerous one. Negative 1 times each of these terms and a plus 1. 
Now if you're going to combine things together, I have three quarters and I have two thirds. So you need a common denominator. The lowest common denominator of four and three would be 12. So I'm going to write this over 12. To make that over 12, I had to multiply by three. So I do the same thing in the top and I get nine twelfths x. Um, I'm going to add the y's together and I'm going to have to have a common denominator of four. So this is going to be two fourths y. This one, we said we were going to make it into twelfths. So that's times four in the denominator, times four in the numerator, that means minus eight. And this one minus one quarter y, we're all right because we already changed the other one to y, and a plus one. And finally, you gather your like terms. Oops, I forgot to put the x here. So, so we have nine minus eight is one twelfth x. And my y's are going to be two quarters minus one quarter. That's one quarter y plus one. And that's it. This wasn't an equivalent question. It was just an expanding and simplifying. So we were multiplying by negative one. Now don't be fooled by how easy this lesson is because when we get into more of the factoring, you're going to make, need to make sure that your factoring skills are really sharp. And I guarantee you, if you follow along and look at my handout, you will, you will really greatly improve your factoring skills. So that's it for today. Hope you're having a good one. Please comment. Let me know how things are going in your class and if you need some help with any specific questions. Bye for now.